Hello guys and welcome to part 4 of the Make a Multiplayer VR game series. In the last episode we show you how to create multiple rooms and switch between them. We showed you different ways to load scenes in Unity in conjunction with Normcore. In this video we go one step further and leave the basics to look at how to synchronize custom data in Normcore. This is basically everything that Normcore doesn't cover out of the box, such as the real-time transform component, that we use to synchronize the position, rotation and scale of the objects. Today we're going to show you how to change the color of your avatar at runtime with a custom real-time model. Before we look at the code though, we need to understand how the data store of Normcore works. The data store, as the name suggests, stores all the data present in an active room. It is responsible for detecting any changes to a collection of real-time models present in the room like the real-time transform or real-time models that we created custom ourselves. The data store then sends updates to the room server so every player can see the changes made to a game object. Most of the time the server accepts all requests from a player and updates the state on all the other players' machines. However, as we have seen in the second video of this series, the server can also reject updates when the player, for example, doesn't have ownership over an object. In this case, the server rolls back the changes that the player made locally on his machine and reverts them. This is why you can see the cube jump back to its original place when you try to grab it without requesting the ownership first. To ensure that Normcore has to synchronize as little data as possible, the server just sends the difference between the last and the new state. This is called Delta Updates. So the server just checks how the scene looks like now and then applies little changes to it instead of replacing the whole scene every time something changes. Alright guys, now let's get more specific and talk about real-time models. A real-time model is a collection of states that we want to synchronize such as IDs, colors or for example the name of a player object. Keep in mind that each property in our model needs to be a primitive type such as string, int, float, vector tree or color. More complex types such as materials and textures are too heavy and cannot be serialized. You can see here how a real-time model could look like and we will write our own in just a minute. First, let me explain to you what each attribute seen on the screen means. The first attribute at the top, which is called real-time model, signals to Normcore that it is a real-time model and is now ready for model compilation, which we will show you after writing our code. The second attribute, which is called real-time property, is an attribute which we will put in front of each variable that we want to synchronize. As you can see, the real-time property attribute has two fields. The first field is the property ID, which is a unique identifier for the property in the real-time model. This property ID only has to be unique in this specific real-time model and not across the whole project. That means in another real-time model, you can use the ID 1, 2, 3 and so on again. The second field tells Normcore if the property should be synced reliably or unreliably. Reliable means that Normcore will make sure that all players will always get the change no matter what. However, since messages can technically get lost over the network, this also means that Normcore could potentially send the messages many times until they arrive at all the players. This can therefore cause more bandwidth. If you want to make sure that all the players see a change like a color change, we recommend reliable. For that, we just write true in the second field. Unreliable is recommended if you want to send a message many times and don't care if one message might get lost at some point, such as an animation or a particle effect for a gun that is shooting many times. For that, we would just write false in the second field. So in the sample on your left side, you can see that Normcore has only filled two fields, such as the property ID, which is for example 1, and then they write true, which means reliable. But before we finally wrap up, Normcore gives you even a third option for the real-time property attribute, which is a bool called change event. So if you put false or nothing in the field, you tell Normcore to not create a change event. If you put true, this basically means after compiling our custom real-time model, Normcore will automatically add an event for us that we can call whenever a change of this property is detected. For example, you would like to play a particle effect, 
when the color of a cube has changed. We would just put this piece of code into the change event that Normcore created for us. But don't worry, we will also show you that in detail in a second. So, enough talking and let's jump over to Unity and I'll leave the stage to Gonzalo. Hello guys! To start I will create a new folder called Models and I will create two new scripts, Color Sync and Color Sync Model. So let's start with the Color Sync Model. We remove the mono behavior because the models can be a subclass of any other class. Then we remove the default code and we create the field for the color. Uh, the variables here has to be uh, private and start with an underscore. So private color underscore color. As Roberto explained before, we need to add the attribute real time model to this class so Normcore knows that this is actually a model and to the variable the attribute real time property. We need to pass the ID if it's going to be reliable and if we want the callback. Now we can save the script and if everything is ok, we will be able to compile this model. This way Normcore will generate the needed code to sync this model to the data store. Now we can do the color sync and this class will be a subclass of the real-time component. So we need the namespace of normal.realtime. And instead of inheriting from mono behavior, we will inherit from real-time component color sync mode. The real-time component will automatically create a property called model and this model will be populated with an instance of the color sync model. Now the idea is to change and update the color of our avatar and for that we will create a variable mesh renderer array to store the head and hands of the avatar. Now let's create a method that will update the mesh renderer color. For some reason, the normcore avatar hands contain two materials, so we will have to loop between the mesh renderer's materials and update every color on them. Great! Now let's create a method that will subscribe to the model and keep updated our mesh renderer color. Don't worry that this will make sense in a moment. Now because we add the callback on the color sync model, we have access to the protected override on real time model replace that will be called as soon as we connect to the server. We can remove the base. And here we will subscribe the did color change method to the current model. And if for any reason the model changed totally, like when we change scenes, we will have to unsubscribe from the old model and subscribe to the current one. Let's do it. So, if the previous model is not null, we unsubscribe our did color change. Now, if the current model is fresh, meaning that it's the first time that we connect to the server, we will set the color of the model as the local color that we have. So the current model color equals mesh renderers, the first one. Then we can update the mesh renderer. And now we subscribe to the current model, so if there is any change, we will update the mesh renderer color. And with this, we are completely synced. 
To make things easier to test, I will create a serialized field color. And we'll check every frame if the color has changed and keep the model updated. Okay, let's go to the editor and test. All right, guys. Now, after spawning our norm core avatar, we will have this color variable on the color sync that will update the model whenever we change the value. Great, guys. Now that we know that it's working, let's add something more functional like adding a random color to the avatar when it's spawned on the scene. Normally, we would use the await method for this, but the models are not ready by then. So we're going to use the start method. So we create the start method. And we create a variable to store the random color. And then we set it to the model. Just remember that to put your changes, we have to change the model value, like we did in the update. Now let's go to the editor and test. Okay, guys, so I'm going to press play and test. And as you can see, a random color was generated. Let's try once again. And there we go. Thank you guys and see you in another one. Awesome guys, and that's it for this video. In this video, we learned how to create real-time models to synchronize our custom data. We also learned about how the data store and real-time models work in detail. You are now able to do basically anything you can imagine with non-core. In the next video, we are going to cover how to add a nickname to each player and let them change their name at runtime. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel or leaving us a like. You can find source code for all the videos on our Patreon. For questions, feel free to join our Discord and we are happy to answer you. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.